So here we are in Comfy again, and we're going to look at very briefly at another aspect of Comfy, and which you'll soon come across, I'm sure, which are control nets. And these are control nets. You'll I'll put this workflow in, and uh, if these come up with uh, red, then you go to Manager and install missing nodes. You will, however, also need to go and get the control net models to get those you go to manager install models and search for control net so there are a lot of different models and there are a lot of different kinds of control net i'm going to only deal with caddy which is a line extractor which essentially makes a black line drawing of your image and the depth once you have grasped how they work the other ones all work the same and and, uh, and i think you'll be able to find find your way through them but there's there's poses and uh, all sorts in there there's quite a few different ones and there's too many to go through so I'm, I'm going over the underlying principle of uh, how they work they basically all look at different aspects of an image and uh, use that to control uh, what the generation looks like so one aspect of control nets is that they need pre-processing now you can hook up the preprocessor to feed directly into it. I don't. I always. I don't. I always preprocess. Preprocess. <laughs> God, I'm going to mess with that. And um, and then load the image in because in the pre here you want to. You might want to mess around with uh, these numbers here, which we'll we'll go into in a second. So it's not necessarily a one shot. Put it in and it comes out the other end. And then I'm going to apply the control net here. So first of all, uh, this is uh, a video that comes after putting Laura's in. So we have Laura's in here from the previous video. And the previous video, you should probably watch them in sequence, but you don't have to. Right, so first of all, uh, I'm assuming you've been to Manager and installed all the bits and pieces you need. So you'll be faced with this when you've found the nodes or when you download my workflow. So I'll just go over how to plug it in, which is very simple indeed. So your input image, your depth map goes in there, your control net model goes in there, and then you run your positive from your pot, you see the conditioning here, into the positive, and then the positive back into the sampler, and exactly the same thing with the negative. Negative back into the sample and that's it that's your control net wired up so what we need to do we're going to work with this image here but uh, any image so we're going to do a landscape image so the first thing to do is to turn off these so you can go right click on your group the group here and you can go set group to never you see that set group to never and then this group won't do anything it'll just sit there and you can do the same with this one, though you don't really need to. So now we're just going to work to make our depth map. So we'll choose our file. There it is. And we'll just run that and see what comes out. There you go. So that's what looks, that's what a depth map. Now, you can alter these numbers here. This is the resolution. It looks at the image. So it's breaking it up into 512 squares. You don't really need to know about that. And this is the background, the threshold. So this is uh, how black it is and how white it is and so on. I would leave these settings uh, alone and you can mess with them afterwards. Once you've, these images, the uh, thing is to change these numbers and see what happens. So the way this works is pale stuff, the whitest stuff is the nearest stuff and the darkest stuff is the further away stuff. Okay, so uh, this image, you can right click it and go open image and then you can drag your, your image off in, into your, uh, uh, wherever you're doing your project. So you can drag it off into your depth maps or whatever. Or this image will be in your temp folder. So if we turn this off to never, turn this on always. So if you go to your temp folder, there's your image in your temp folder. And there's your image loaded. So we're doing pretty well. Now we'll look at the settings and we'll try several and see what they do here. You can use a mask, but I won't go into that. I'm going to deal with masking in a separate video entirely as a subject by itself, because it's what well, masking is something that people find quite difficult, I think. So we're doing pretty well. We've got our control net loaded, plumbed in, and our map made, 
and loaded. So next we'll look at what these numbers here do. So some of them are fairly simple. Strength is obvious. Higher the number, the stronger the influence. Start and end percent is a little more complicated. In the first video, we went through what all these numbers, and so in the very first video you can look at, you'll find out what all these numbers do. So if you don't understand what these numbers do, Go and look at the image to image video and it'll tell you what they are. So I can't go through everything on each video <laughs> from the start. So I've broken this into separate videos. So you can go back and look at this video and then you'll know what all these numbers do. So we're using a turbo, so we've only got 10 steps. So we have 10 steps. So this range here, it's going to start at, from the very beginning at the first step and it's going to stop its influence at the sixth step. And so you can alter that. You can start at five and end at ten. You can play around with that and each of those has a different result. So for this, I'm going to turn off the land decker. So you right click on the LoRa and go bypass. And then that LoRa won't make anything, any difference at all. Because that one's not working, we'll bump the other LoRa up. And you need to look at my video on LoRa's if you want to know how LoRa's work. So we do the prompt and I've done a video on prompting earlier so you can go and look at that and you'll learn something about prompt. I'm going to start my prompt with a simple description of what we have. So we'll put the image by the prompt. So it's a fairy tale castle. We have a lake or a river. What do you think it is? I think it's a lake. Well a still lake. Fantasy illustration is fine. We don't have JC Landecker anymore. We have digital painting. That's the keyword for the Laura. And we have morning sun. Quite a soft light. And probably initially that's all we want to say about it. Should we say distant hill? We can take that out of there. So nothing in, in the uh, in the negative. We might put something. We'll put uh, photographs. We don't want a photograph. If you want a photograph, you put photograph in here, obviously. So there we go. So we need a denoise. We want to change this quite a lot. So we go, I think, to 65. And there we are. All ready to go. We've got a fixed seed. The seeds was dealt with in the first video as well. So that's it, the whole lot is ready to go. So here we are with that back, and there's our image, which as you see, has taken all the color from this, and it's taken the structure from this, which is quite nice. And one thing I will warn you is that control nets are quite computationally expensive. So uh, they will slow you down. If you have a monster graphics card, you'll be fine. So this is being influenced both by the control net, and I didn't go through choosing the model, but you have to choose a depth model. So there's all the different models here. There's two depth maps, I think. Yeah, so there's depth of rank 1 to 8. I think 1 to 8 is slightly less expensive in computation, in computational time. But uh, 256 is better in quality. Right, I think, uh, yeah, 256 levels of grey, and that's 1 to 8 levels of grey. I think that'll be what it is. I'm not certain. <laughs> so I guess there, but that makes sense. So now we want to see what it does uh, without the influence of this. So at the moment you can see it's very much taken the colour for this, but there's no colour information in here. So we can turn it off essentially by taking the D-Noise up to 1, which means that this image will have no influence whatsoever. And we'll run that again. So here it is back, and here's the difference in the image. <laughs> so you've got a bit of castle in the sky there. So... I think you should be able to see that we still have the same composition, but it doesn't know anything about what's happening in the background, really. <laughs> hence, the, <laughs> hence the funny castle. So I'm putting it in at very strong levels at present. So uh, that's, uh, that's the result of uh, putting things in at high levels. But I think you can see, let's bring the original uh, image up close. So you can see we do have a relationship. You can see that this all follows pretty much the same silhouette here. And we've just got, this has all got prettified. I have no idea where that castle came from. It really likes putting castles in the sky. But I suppose I put, fairy, I put fairy tale in, so I have only myself to blame. So on the next part, we'll look at what Canny does, which um, makes outlines around things. So we'll do that next. And with this, you can, you can play with the strength of this against the strength of this image here. So you can, you can, with this, you control the strength of this image. And with this, you control the strength of the depth map. So you can balance the two together and, uh, uh, and get a result that you like. 
You don't have to put the same image you made the depth at from in here. You could put a, a, a mood image in here that was um, entirely different, but just had lighting or colours that you liked. But if you just, the, the less like this image it is, the more, the higher the denoise has to be, because it has to change it a lot. Uh, it'll struggle uh, with a, a different image and uh, low denoise, because it won't because you won't know what to do, <laughs> so it won't work very well. But um, if you use 75, which I did in the last one, and put a, a, an image of, of uh, a different landscape, but with uh, nice lighting that you liked, or nice colours, then that would be reflected and you'd get this castle lit different, which is rather nice. Okay, so we'll move on to Caddy, which is quite a different thing. So here we are, we're going to do Canny next. And I see I've moved my depth preprocessor over there and we've got a Canny there. These will all be in the workflow so you can swap them over. So we don't want this to run. So we turn to never, that one to never as well. And we just want to process this image. So we've got a, an image uh, of a lady sitting and, it, and it's a bronze. So it's quite hard to... Uh, it's quite hard to put that into image to image and uh, and get a uh, you know a normal coloured illustration. So we'll run that, and there we have our canny map, which is just a series of lines that it will try and fit the uh, generation. So this image will now be in your temp folder. So we can turn this off, turn this on, go to always, and if we go to our temp folder, there it is. So we've got our image loaded in, and we must change the control or a model here to canny. So you see, canny, canny. So this model understands this sort of line work. I'm going to uh, use this image as a, as a colour image, but first we'll run it uh, without. So obviously, <laughs> castle won't do anymore. So we'll say a, uh, a woman sitting, and uh, we'll put her in a garden because we've got uh, all of this uh, stuff in in here so uh, we'll put garden and we'll put autumn and fantasy illustration is fine i don't think we want to still lake morning sun yes that's good soft light that's good distant hill Ooh. i will leave the distant hill why not so that should all be good and as you do noise is at one so it's at the moment it's ignoring that image so and the settings here are the same you know you you have to play with those to uh and they'll all have different effects so here we are, she's back, and there she is, sitting. So you can see how it's stuck to the relationship there. So we've got everything we've asked for, I think. We've got a garden, we've got autumn, we've got the young lady, it's fantasy. Morning sun, yes. So now uh, we can use this image to, to influence a little. So we can lower our denoise to, what should we take it to? We'll take it to 80. So the, this and the prompt, so the what what's called the conditioning essentially is doing 80% of the heavy lifting and this image is doing only 20% and we ought to reflect something about this in the prompt so as this is a watercolor we might add watercolor and that and that uh, that should help the influence of that picture because we're using this as a style image so we'll cue that and here she is back and you see that this has influenced the image. We've still got the same pose and we've got a watercolour feel. Now if you want to take that image a little further, I would add another Laura. And this has uh, the feel of um, Alphonse Mucha a little bit. So, you know, it could be. So what we could do is add, uh, add an Alphonse. So we'll unbypass our Laura, choose Alphonse Mucha. Alphonse wants to move at her level. <laughs> so we have to put the keyword for the Laura in. So that's the keyword that activates the Laura. Okay, and I think I think we can afford um, to go to 75 on the denoise. So this is giving this a little bit more influence. And we'll leave this the same. This is doing pretty well. So we'll cue that. And here we go. You see the influence of Alphonse Boucher. And because I went down to 75 here, we've now got our castle in that position. So we can now clearly see we've got all of our influences going. We've got the pose from this lady. We've got, I think with a few iterations, you might get a more graceful pose. She's a bit, uh, she's okay. I, I would do a few iterations to get a slightly different pose. But, um, but for this demonstration, I think that shows it all works pretty well. So this tree has appeared. So our castle has appeared 
in the same position as here. All our lighting and colours are coming from this. And all our pose information and subject information is coming from here. Okay, that's it for uh, control nets. There are other control nets. They all work in pretty much the same way. That's an animation one. I don't know anything about that. Open pose, uh, you get to sort of a stick figure. There's a preprocessor for that. There's canny, there's depth. There's a recolor one. I've never used that, but I assume that's the same thing. There's Sketch, which is like a crude form of canny. And these are all different types of control net. I only use canny and depth myself, but uh, I occasionally use open pose. But um, anyway, they all work pretty much the same. There's a preprocessor and uh, then you load the appropriate model. Okay, I hope that was interesting and helpful. Thank you very much.